Welcome to Cruise Ship Crime Investigators, the book series. Book two, Serial Killer. Chapter one, Mid Pacific Ocean. Excitement is high most nights, but tonight the air is charged with electricity. The purpose of a masked ball is to remain anonymous, to mix and dance with strange partners. To the formal evening dress, many have added a simple partial Venetian masquerade mask that allows eating. Some have separated from their partner, ramping up the excitement. They enjoy the tease of being unknown and vulnerable, now mid-ocean. It is two days and 700 nautical miles since they left the Panama Canal transit. Supper in the huge ornate grand dining room that seats about 600 has finished. The ballroom awaits. However, Captain Neil Reynolds has a daring alternative to offer. Tapping his wine glass with a spoon, the consummate entertainer stands. Who will dare join me? in absolute darkness alone, in the middle of our planet's biggest ocean. Tonight is his favourite party piece. He wears a simple highwayman's eye cover and a cape over one shoulder, so the other epaulette still boasts his rank. Tonight's new moon heralds a magical phase where desires are set and intentions made. Unless you have an inside cabin, you'll never have seen such darkness. The roar of laughter rings out. Mocking the cheaper cabins is an allowable discrimination on any ship. The sky is perfect for stargazing, but this is not a night for the faint-hearted. Just because the moon cannot be seen, it doesn't mean its powers are hidden or reduced. Quite the contrary. Tis the time it is at its most impish, most playful, and most dangerous. Think long and hard before you join me on the sun terrace. Woo! is the pantomime cry from the waiters. Playing the goblin even more, the captain whisks his cape up. All the ship's external lights will go out. Your challenge is absolute darkness. The moon's strange powers will increase your awareness. The buzz of our technology and artificial intelligence will whir louder and louder, threatening to come to life. The captain parades towards the exit. Circling his cape, he pauses on the room's exit steps next to the rarely used grand piano and looks back at his large audience. He still has his radio microphone. In the Hindu tradition, fasting on this day will prevent widowhood. Too late for those of you who have eaten. On the night of the new moon, the body weight of honeybees peaks, as does the weight of some cruisers. Cruisers love to laugh about the gluttony on a ship. Tonight, they can laugh, but the weather is about to change. Visibility and stability on deck will begin to decrease from tomorrow and will make turning lights out a risk. Although stargazing is not normally held on the night of the masked ball, the masks and dress are adding to the drama the captain enjoys. Tonight is perfect. No other ship for miles. No city, no traffic, and no industry to offer light pollution. It will be the darkest night of your lifetime. Your heart will race. Madness and schizophrenia will rise from within. The waiters add another chorus of wow. Some of the staff are veterans, maybe 30 years of service on the same ship, working nine-month shifts with just a month or two home to see the families they financially support. Do not underestimate how frightening and disorientating this can be. The waiters lead a worrying woo. Ten minutes to lights out. No late arrivals are permitted on deck. No glass allowed on deck. Members of the crew will be at every doorway to assist. Ten minutes. 
Do not be late. The haunting laughter through the address system is added by someone else. Someone they will never see. Captain Neil leaves dramatically, knowing few will risk the dark. To most, his performance finished with his cape billowing behind him. Chapter 2. Masks on, lights out. The ship is small with just 1,200 guests. Although it has elevators at three points, aft, midships and the front, they are busy after dinner. Some guests are retiring to their cabins and many to the top. Deck 9 overlooks the Lido deck and people swell out to manually climb one deck higher to the Sun Terrace. The extra deck circles a machinery and communications hub and stretches from the mid-pole to the front. Please come away from the stairs. You will lose your orientation when the lights go out, Captain Neil announces. You have just minutes. Quickly now, make safe. Like a Mexican wave falling to a slow end, every guest lays down on the deck, looking up. Even with the ship's lights on, stars are easily visible in the clear night sky. The deputy captain walks amongst the guests with a keen eye on safety. He is many years younger than Neil, slimmer, and has an olive skin. By number, confirm doors closed and stairs clear is Deputy Captain Vasil Nagy's short, sharp command into his radio. Number one, port forward deck doors closed and clear, is the first voice on the radio. The rest follow. Turning all the lights off is an extremely serious thing to do, and only happens when they know every guest is safe. The captain holds the rail with his left hand and the microphone in his right. He hears Nagy's report on his radio. Clear to go, Captain. Can you all hear me? The captain asks. Yes, is the combined reply. This is a smartphone-free zone until I announce you can use them, as even the light from your screen will destroy what you're about to see. Look up. Five. The guests count down each number with him. Four, three, two, one. He makes the final command. Lights out! As the lights on the deck vanish, Mother Nature lights hundreds and hundreds more stars in the sky and boosts the power on the ones that were already there. There are wows and gasps of amazement. The chatter builds to an exciting din as the amazing sight continues to reveal itself. The pitch dark of night is ignored because the sky is mesmerizing. It is a vision no guest will ever forget and will share for a long time to come. Few have seen the sky from the middle of the Pacific Ocean. This body of vast water is over 160 square kilometers. It is larger than all the land masses on Earth combined, Captain Neil narrates, still craning his neck to look up. His tone reveals his pride in this spectacle. More stars than you can ever have imagined. Too many to name. If you look high over on the port side, you can see Mars, the big red planet, now thought to have been lush, green, and with both life and water until hit by solar flares. Coming back is the constellation Libra, Next, more directly over us, is Virgo. Then continue along the line, Leo, Cancer, and then Gemini. No one moves or turns their head. They lay flat, looking up, mesmerized. If you feel the need to pollute the night with your cell phones, now is the time. We have a few more minutes left, and I will call for light. Cell phones light the deck with a blue glow. Many who were laying down decide to sit or stand. Others move in the flat blue haze. More and more phones point to the sky, some to take photographs. Others are using a star app, which names all the stars. Lights back on in five, four, three, two, one. 
Lights on! Neil shouts. Lights on! Repeat, lights on! Nagy says into his radio. Most of the stars vanish, as if someone turned the lights off in the sky. Some guests rush for the stairs, keen to continue their evening. Others crowd the captain or officers, while others check their phones to see if the pictures worked out for them. Man overboard! Man overboard! is the shout on deck nine below. With no ability to see down the side of the ship from the terrace, officers rush past the guests and descend a deck. Note position. Someone give me a status report. Captain Neil Reynolds shouts into his walkie-talkie as he follows his team. Man overboard! 